Hey Bob, congrats on a recent paper we got to publish together. You too. Uh, thank you. On Big day. It was, it was. Uh, a lot of hard work went into it. You know, great team behind us. Uh, Hanny uh, Malone, our junior partner that has done a fantastic job with it. Thanks to him and our whole Scripps research team. I think it's only been a publication for a week or two now, but I was, we were pretty, both pretty excited. Many, many years that. in the works. So. Yes, yes it was. Anyways, you know, we're looking at the cost of using bioactive implants in the lateral lumbar inner body space. Right, right. And well, yeah. historically, as you remember, we used a lot of peak sort of smooth surface implants years back when, when laterals first started and, and then actually until pretty recently. And that required a, a pretty big biologic load to try to drive fusions um, we were using the most expensive biologics in many cases. Um, and that was a burden for the health systems, it was a burden for us, and a burden for the patients, even some safety profile issues for those biologics in those settings. So with this new technology, as 3D printing has come around, our understanding of, of the importance of bone apposition, on growth, in growth sort of modalities, uh, it was a perfect time for us to start thinking about using that new technology in this setting. And that married great with, with a Trax or the bone putty that fits into those interstitial spaces or the cavity of, of this cage. And so we launched a study together, which was to really look at whether this new technology could lead to as good, if not better outcomes and really cheapen the price point at which we're, we're achieving those results. At the outset, I was a little reticent, I, using new things, conservative nature of surgeons. I wasn't sure we were, what we were getting into, but uh, the more I looked at the science of the biologic and, and the implant itself, the more I thought, you know, there's, there's something here. There's still some pain point in what we were doing in the lateral space, trying to get fusion rates, using expensive biologics. And I thought, this is the right point to start testing this new stuff. Yeah, and we looked at, um, you know, it's just short of 100 patients. We had 90 patients and uh, 136 levels that we treated. Um, and the uh, fusion classification that's new that we use that's CTE based because of the things that you just mentioned, right? The, the 3D printing and the microarchitecture of this implant makes it a little bit difficult on an x ray to really solidly see that bone that we could typically see like grow through a peak cage. We don't see that same that same um, view on a, on a regular x-ray. So we wanted to be really picky about our fusion. And I remember us at the very outset saying, hey, let's make sure that we get CT scans on these patients to be really thoughtful. Um, and then to see that, you know, our fusion rates were in the 99% realm was a little bit surprising, I think, to, to both of us. Um, well, it's better than histor historical right. fusion rates, right? right. By a, a decent margin, probably yeah. five, 10% better than what we've seen with other implants and other biologics in that space. Yeah, and with no expense on the side of complications or safety profile, right? Like we were able to achieve those things without having to sacrifice, you know, uh, whether it's technique or like I said, complications that may be associated with other biologics that can be like seromas or, you know, um, nerve root irritation, that kind of thing, you know, so. Uh, that was pretty. That was pretty stellar to pretty stellar to be able to report on. And I think you know, for us, we were a little bit skeptical about trying to publish a paper that had a ninety nine percent fusion rate because anytime I see that, I'm always like, usually that's hogwash. Yeah, you know? but maybe not. Yeah, yeah. But I, you know, I think we can both speak to the diligence that we put into this paper and um, you know, just making sure that each patient received the right care, but then also were followed appropriately. Um, all the way through their CT scans. So um. absolutely. So I, I, I don't. I think our follow-up rate was commensurate, if not better, than most studies you see out there in terms of yeah. the consecutive patients that were treated. Um, and and importantly, with this study, it made us rethink how we look at fusions, as you said, with the CT and the classification scheme. So now we have a new tool that hopefully will be applied to anything else that we do in that space, so we can evaluate fusions going forward in a more thoughtful thoughtful way as we move into other areas. Do you feel like like what we've been doing has had a substantial impact on like even the hospital cost or you know, the care that we're providing per level? You know, what's your perspective from like a leadership standpoint within within our department um, on what we're doing to help yeah. the organization? 
we're in partnership with the health system and, and if we're responsible, we're thoughtful and we can perform that care at a cheaper price point, then in the end, everybody kind of wins and, and we can, we can help, help the health system be both more responsible and more effective for the patient. So historically, those inner body constructs per level biologically were somewhere in the two to $5,000 range. I mean, it's an FD. enormous cost. FD. Um, and this has driven it down to infinitesimally small amounts in relative terms. Yeah. So it's, it's a compounding effect that's impressive. One of the things that like, I get really excited about is the fact that like, when you study something and it leads to a, a change in practice, and like, there's not that many moments in the last 10 years where I can speak to a study that I helped design and participated in with a great team. To me, this is another one of those moments that I had because you know, we enrolled like over 15 months. Like I think it was May of 17 to October of 18 or something like that. And here we are like four years later, almost four years later since that October date. And I'm still using Mod XLIF and Atrax. So I love the fact that we did something that has lasting change, and I'm, I'm super proud of that. Yeah, they're, they're, as you said, it's, it's one of those sort of landmark papers, and it's, it's sort of quiet. It's not, there's not a lot of pizzazz, it's not shiny, but it's super influential. Yeah. And the proof is in the pudding, because you see that we have not changed in four years. And it's so successful that there's not much margin for improvement. And there's really not much improvement on the cost side either. So it's really achieved this metric of dramatic change in our practices, huge cost savings, and absolute beneficence to the patient. So you can't really improve upon it yeah. at this point. There's not many studies you do, certainly in deformity as we do, where you leave almost no margin for improvement yeah. with the results. Well, congrats again. Thanks. <laughs>